Welcome back everyone. We are now at the coloring stage and I'm going to try my best to guide you through it as well as possible. So first and foremost there are many ways of coloring things. Okay, There's many different styles and you know ways of approaching coloring. What we're going to be focusing on today is quite a simple approach, a, more of a standard one that is very much applied within the industry. Uh, and I'm going to try to keep it, you know, as, as standard and simple as possible. Right, so first and foremost, I've for all panels, I've just done some structuring, so cleaning up. I've added all my uh, inking and penciling layers to a line art folder, uh, a support folder for anything that, you know, any layer that helped me with support, like perspective lines or 3D drawing, like re reference material and stuff. And then the colors are basically, I've created a uh, layer for flats. Now I'm quickly going to get into flats in a second. And obviously the frame background, which was already there. Okay, now, first of all, we're going to take the color wheel out of here and make it much bigger because we're going to be using this quite a lot. Well, I, well, maybe not too big, but like so. And another thing that we're going to use a lot is our palettes. Okay, so now you have your default color set. There are a couple of other ones. What I'm going to do for this project is I'm going to create a new. So you're going to add color set. You do add new settings, right? And just call it, um, let's see, CSP demo. Okay, okay. Right, so right now it's all transparent. It's all empty, it's all transparent. So how does it work? You select a color, for example, or any color here. Um, yeah, now basically you can do this for coloring your, uh, your thing. Let's, let's use the right one straight away, and we're not wasting any time. Uh, let's go for, you know, let's color it a bit, uh, maybe like this, for now. Maybe a little bit lighter. Maybe, I don't know, I kind of like this. Right, so just for now, let's use this color, right? Now say you like the color and you want to add it here, then, you know, you just add the color and there you go. Now it's added to your color palette, okay, that you can use later on again. And this is how you keep adding colors that you will most likely be using down the line. All right, so we've made our way to flatting. Flatting is the first stage of coloring and it is a very important one. It is also the least creative process within uh, comics. So it basically means that you're going to separate your colors. So for example, this, uh, these pants are gonna be one color, the vest is gonna be another, his hair is gonna be another, his fingertips, all that stuff. And you have to separate them. Now in order to do that, there are two ways of doing it, right? Uh, you can do what everyone does in Photoshop, or what the grand majority of people do in Photoshop, and that's with a lasso tool, right? So you just go in, and it's also the most precise way of working, but I'm going to show you something that Clip Studio Paint has that might speed up this process. So first I'm going to show you with the lasso tool. Alright, so with the lasso tool, okay, we can basically make selections, like for example, we can make a quick selection here, and Go around, 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 something like this. Now I've got my selection, right? And then I press F for filling, and I just fill the section okay now the reason why it's not filling the whole thing is because right now it's that's another important thing is that it is filling based on a reference if you go to refer to only editing layer and you do this it will fill your section that you have selected so very important there is a big difference okay there is refer other layers or well, I mean refer other layers or refer only to editing layer if you're going to do the lasso method, use refer only to editing layer. If you're going to use the method that I just showed you, the other one, 
or for other layers, then basically what you can do is select individual sections um, and then it will fill the sections based on the referral layer. So in case this uh, the inking layer is what it's referring to. Okay, so important to know. Okay, and so that's basically your flats. Now, something that is also quite useful to know is um, for when using AstroPat, you can just take this menu right here, very useful this menu. We're going to remove this. And then, for example, when you are doing your selections, right, let's say very quickly, I had to select this bit, right, and I couldn't select it for a reason, for any reason whatsoever. I couldn't select it all the way, okay, I only have a section selected. Just here to press your shift simultaneously, and then you can continue drawing out. Considering I'm holding the camera with one hand, I can't really demonstrate it, so it's just so that you know. It's very useful. It's your shift key while you're just selecting, you can add to the selection. Okay. And so yeah, so we are going to speed things up now. I'm going to continue flatting. Like I said, it'll be a combination of using the lasso tool and the, um, the bucket, the fill bucket tool with uh, referencing other layers. And like that, you know, just to win time. And obviously, when doing this, guys, really keep all these things off, okay? This is extremely important because that's what gives you clean flats, like demonstrated right here. Clean flats, okay? All right, let's get straight to it. Alright, so let's slow this down for a second again and let me show you something that is quite interesting and important, especially when you're coloring. So do you see how when you, so I can show you here actually, do you see how when you have a frame selected, right, it highlights, like for example if I'm working on the flats, everything around the flats changes color, right, it becomes like this light bluish thing. Now that's very useful when you're inking so that you know like what your borders are and all that stuff. But uh, when you're coloring, it can basically distract you from thinking that the page is actually darker than it is. And then you might end up selecting darker colors uh, as a result. So as I was looking through this, I thought to myself, right, you know, let's take a bit of a distance. Um, if I were to take a distance, right, and just put it like this, you know, the frame looks a bit too dark, like here, right? And that's because while I was working like this, I had this um, light blue around it, and then it looked fine. Like this is like, okay, it balances out. So in order to avoid that, in order to, um, you know, that it doesn't act as a disturbing force, what you can do is you can go to uh, your preferences, right? You go to your layer frame, and here where it says mask, okay, you can, there's an area color, uh, it's in blue in standard, and your opacity of area display, I think you can put it to zero, and there you go. And now, even when you're working within your individual layer, so you won't see in which, um, like even if I were to go, for example, to panel two, you won't notice it straight away. You will just know it because you're working in panel two. But it's interesting to know. And for coloring, I find this uh, actually quite useful because what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back into some of these colors. And because my flatting was done uh, not too bad, you know, I, I, I can quickly select the colors that I really want based on the flatting layers and just recolor them quickly. And say, for example, now this, this gray was too too dark, uh, I can just quickly go in and modify it. Okay, so let's speed things up again.
Okay, so here's an interesting uh, example of how we can use the close gap feature. So I need to color uh, this girl's hair orange, right? Now if I do this, it doesn't work. Uh, the reason for this is because there are some gaps somewhere in her hair. So what we can do is here under the tool property, in the fill bucket, right, and you have to refer other layers obviously. You can click close the gap and it will basically try to find places where to, yeah, basically close the gap. Now, you can keep on selecting like this and you can also make it smaller so that, you know, it has a bit more margin if you need it. Uh, but this is just a quick and simple way to, you know, get past some of these um, little issues. If you don't want to use the lasso tool uh, on these things, that's fine. You know, here you just basically have a a, a tool that can quickly close your gaps. Um, and, you know, it's not always 100% perfect, so I would still strongly suggest that you finish it up with the lasso tool. But you get, you know, you get the point. You can still... Uh, get things done pretty good, pretty well. All right, let's speed things up again. All right, so now the main part of flatting is done. I know that the colors are all over the place at the moment, but that's normal at this stage because flatting is literally just about getting your colors and your shapes separated from each other. Now it's extremely easy for me to just go in and start playing around with particular sections, um, you know, because the flatting is done. So I can just move around and say, ah, maybe I should go for a blue cape instead. And, you know, I can just quickly change that on the fly and see if that gives better and all that stuff. So let's uh, speed things up again while I try to get the colors right and make it all look a little bit more like one page. I'm liking what I did towards the end of the page, so I might try to, you know, get that vibe from the bottom.
All right, so now that the flatting is pretty much concluded, uh, I have the colors in place. It doesn't mean that I'm satisfied with all the colors though. Definitely in panel three, I'm not happy yet. But uh, to be honest with you, I'm going to, you know, most likely tackle panel three a bit later on uh, because I'm a bit stuck on how to fix this. I, I do have some ideas, but my first um, feeling right now is that it's too busy here, which is very distracting from the panels that are there. I, I want it a whole lot less busy. I wanted to focus on the character more, so I might maybe like downgrade the background considerably. Also here, some stuff here. I want to get rid of this stuff here. Um, so yeah, but that I'm going to leave for later. I'm most likely going to focus on that in the next video, which will focus on, you know, adding the finishing touches and stuff like that. Uh, so what I'll do now, I'll just remove panel 3 completely out of sight for now. And I'm just going to focus on the second part of coloring, which is um, the adding all the lighting, the shadows, and for this, this is where my flats will uh, be very useful because now I can select individual parts uh, that I will be needing for the uh, the lighting or, or the shading or any of that stuff. So I'm going to kick it off with panel 1. And the way that that works is basically, I've got my flats layer. I have an overlay layer, but I've you know removed it for now. I don't really feel like I need it right now. I might turn it on later on again just to see, but for now I just want the uh, natural colors. And this is actually colors. I'm going to call it colors because this is where the actual additional coloring is going to happen. Now, most likely what I'll do, I'll do like the lighting where, where, where the, you know, so you've got the sun, the light comes from here. So I'll play somewhat with the lighting on all these characters. I'm not going to go darker, and the reason for that is um, that when you print stuff out, right, you've got to keep this in mind, uh, your K values. You can't see it here, uh, but basically it means keep your colors within the top half of your square. Uh, why would you do this? It's because when you print stuff out, it looks muddy if your colors are too dark. Okay, so uh, just food for thought. And uh, yeah, so we're going to start focusing on that. So with my flats in um, in place, all I have to do now is, let me deselect this. Okay, and I'm going to start focusing on the blue suit. I'm going to go to the color section. And for the lighting, I guess I can select, I don't know. A brush. I'm gonna do an airbrush for this. So yes, yeah, so as you can see, bit by bit, I start adding my colors here and there. Um, you know, you can see it before and after. Uh, I still have quite a bit to do. I might also modify a little bit things on the go, but you get an idea. So it's basically a layer on top of your flats. Use your flats to make your selections. Uh, you just do that by you know just easily selecting your flats. Make sure that uh, refer edit uh, edited layer only to select. So don't other don't use other layers for that. And then once you've made your selection you go back to your colors and then there you can just you know draw over it. Um, oops. Make sure to switch it back to a brush obviously. And then you can just draw over it and see what it gives. Uh, if it looks anything like what you were hoping, you know. The good thing is that it stays within the lines. You know, it stays within the, um, within what you were looking for. You know, you don't your yellows, for example, don't go outside of out of bounds and stuff like that. All right, I'm going to start speeding this up again and continue working on the coloring, lighting, shading, and so forth.
And okay, so now we've just finished the lighting and shadowing of these panels. And basically for me, this is fine in terms of coloring. So I already said that panel three was going to be reviewed. Now, if I were to turn it back on, uh, it becomes a disturbing factor again. So I'm definitely going to tackle this in the next uh, video where it's basically all about adding the finishing touches. And I don't think that that will be so much of a problem. I think this can definitely be fixed. I'm quite happy with the lighting, with the shadows, with all that stuff, with the coloring in general. Um, so yeah, I just say let's move on to the next and see how we can fix this uh, third panel to you know make this all look finished and all good. And I'll see you in the next video.